Good evening. Thank you for joining me in this Bible study today. As we get our Bibles ready, I would encourage you to go to the book of Job. Go ahead and get your Bibles. Let's get started uh, in turning over there to the book of Job. And we're going to be studying from that uh, book uh, for this lesson as well as next Sunday evening's lesson. There's a lot to cover in Job. And actually, this is a lesson I've done um, a while back, actually, and, and it was requested uh, that I actually do this lesson again. So I'm going to do this one again. And as we continue to uh, grab uh, these applications that, that uh, we are able to get from uh, the book of Job. And, and it's a very powerful lessons that we learn uh, here in this book. And, and I've heard many lessons on it and have uh, just, uh, I guess, uncovered a wealth of, of, of a perspective uh, when looking at this from the very question that we're going to be considering in this lesson entitled, What's Behind Your Hedge? And that's where we're going to start is what's behind our hedge? And that's really a good question that we need to ask ourselves. Uh, by using the word hedge, I am referring to, even as the word intends, uh, security uh, and or protection. Okay, And the idea is that the hedge is there which really assists us uh, with feeling protected. Uh, but what happens when the hedge is gone? And, and that's what we're really going to be thinking about in this lesson. What happens when the hedge is gone? Um, when the hedge comes down, what, what then? Well, that's why we're asking this question, what's behind our hedge? Because even as we see from the scriptures that even Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5, examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you unless indeed you are disqualified? So we want to take this time in this brief lesson to consider and examine our faith. What's behind our hedge? So if you're there in Job chapter 1, I want to jump right on in here. Job chapter 1. And look at verse 1 about this man that we're introduced to here. Again, he's a familiar man, I think, to, to most, if not all of us. Uh, this man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job. And the description that verse 1 gives in the latter part there was that this man, was, this man named Job, was blameless and upright and one who feared God and shunned evil. And as you go on in this chapter, uh, looking at the next two verses, you note that Job had really, it was a, he had a good-sized family uh, consisting of seven sons and three daughters. You see in verse 2 that speaks of, of his children. And also it says in verse 3 that Job's possessions were 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and a very large household. And as you note there, and, and I'm going to underline this as well uh, here in a moment as well, is that this man was the greatest of all the people of the East. Uh, we want to really uh, highlight that in our, in our minds here as we, as we go through this lesson that with all these, again, a good-sized family of 10 children, uh, these great possessions with uh, land and livestock, certainly we can see how uh, he was considered to be the greatest of all the people of the East. Uh, because in Job's day and time, uh, thinking about his culture, uh, he... Uh, would be considered uh, extremely wealthy. Uh, he would be, he'd be known as being successful in the eyes of many there, obviously, uh, as noted. And, and what we'd even consider today uh, blessed beyond measure, right? Uh, even in our day and time, people define others by the size of their families, by, the, by how much uh, one owns, uh, possesses. You know, what's your worth? You know, a lot of times people are wanting to know what 
what your assets are and, and how much you have in that. And, and so, so a lot of times success is defined in that kind of way in regards to our wealth and, and to what uh, kind of land we have and possessions and so forth. So really Job had a lot going for him. There's, I, I don't think there's a single one that would, that would say that he didn't because uh, it's very notable here that he had a lot going for him. But unbeknownst to Job, there was a conversation that was actually happening uh, between the Lord and Satan, if you will. And you go to Job chapter 1. If you will go to Job chapter 1 again and read, read on, we're going to look at verses 8 through 12 and bring these verses back up. But again, please prove all things according to God's word, not mine. Uh, I'm fallible. The, the word of the Lord is not. So look at verse 8 through 12. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? That there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil. So Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household and around all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land. But now stretch out your hand and touch all that he has and he will surely curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not lay a hand on his person. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. Look on in verses 13 through 19. Now there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And a messenger came to Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the donkeys feeding beside them when the Sabians raided them and took them away. Indeed, they have killed the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, The fire of God fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, The Chaldeans formed three bands, raided the camels, and took them away. Yes, and killed the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, Your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house, and suddenly a great wind came from across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house, and it fell on the young people, and they are dead. And I alone have escaped to tell you. No, this is one of those distressing texts that's really difficult to, to read and, and again get the imagery. What we find here is, is so heart-wrenching that Job loses all of his children tragically and his servants, his livestock, his property, all of his physical possessions. And one of the things that always amazes me uh, is how Job responds. And actually, I was, used, I was talking about this response with someone the other day. That Job's response to all of this as intriguing in verses 20 through 22, Job arose, tore his robe and shaved his head and he fell to the ground and worshiped. And he said, naked I came from my mother's womb and naked shall I return there. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all of this Job did not sin nor charge God with wrong. Now when you consider what our response would be to this. I mean, I mean, just take a moment. Think about how would we respond? Would we be like Job who worshiped the Lord, who said the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I mean, again, when we think to what I said to highlight in our minds as we consider this lesson together, that all those possessions that he had, that he was... Uh, this man was the greatest of all the people of the East. And look at all what horrible things that took place. What would our response be And losing, well, everything? Well, at least we think everything until we go on a little bit further in the next chapter. But I want you to just take a moment and take stock uh, of, you know, what we have physically. 
I think that, well, uh, we, we have a lot in physical possessions. Um, you know, there are, you know, a lot of times we think we don't have enough when really we have more than enough. Uh, people on the other side of this uh, globe that don't even have clothing, don't have uh, things, you know, food for that matter. And, and, and here we are, you know, uh, we, take, we take stock in our physical possessions. And if something happens to one of those physical possessions, maybe there's a dent or ding in the car, <laughs> you know, we'll just lose our minds, won't we? Uh, you know, but you think, think about how much we put stock in our physical possessions. And, and it, you know, and I, I've said this before, and, uh, and I think about it often when I uh, sing this song to myself, uh, when I'm humming the tune, when we're singing in worship, that this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. You know, it's just so easy to sing those words to that song, isn't it? You know, it's so easy to sing that song while we're in our nice vehicle with, you know, the AC, you know, blowing in the hot summer months. Um, well, and then having the heater on, the nice heated seats, if you have that option in your cars, <laughs> you know, um, during the cold winter months. Because we can sing those words, and we can say them when everything's going great when everything's going just perfectly fine because really when you think about it we have a hedge around us as well i mean i mean think think about what we're reading in this text from from, from job uh, about what what satan was saying there um in verse 9 and uh, verse 10 does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, around all that he has on every side? You've blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land. You know, and, and, and Satan was making a, a charge against God and, and, and for Job that, you know, look, the only reason Job's serving you and worshiping you is because, well, look at all the things he has going for him, but take them away. Take the hedge down and see what happens next. We have a hedge that has to find us as well. We have a comfort zone. And I, I, I like to, to remind myself about that, uh, how easy it is to think about our comfort areas. But what happens when our physical possessions that we prize so much are no longer there. What's behind that hedge after it's gone? Well, let's say we know old Job today and we see he lost his children, his physical possessions. And, 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 and again, it's, it's really hard to find the words to, to talk to others who have lost uh, significant things. I've, I've known people who've lost a lot of things in their lives. I, I, I've known a, a person, a woman who lost all of her children tragically. I know uh, a house, uh, her house had burnt to the ground, um, had lost her, her spouse, uh, you know, and, 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 and dealt as well with, with physical ailments. And it's hard to wrap our minds around that. And, and, and really, what do you say to someone who is uh, in, in such uh, horrific circumstances in their lives? You know, I mean, yeah, you know, trying to find the words is, is very difficult. Um, and, and could you imagine uh, that as we see with Job, that, that basically with all his possessions, his children, his, you know, they, they've all died. But look at this other hedge that we see in chapter 2. You know, so far what Job still has, I mean, well, at the end of chapter 1, he still has his faith in God. He still, he, he, he worshiped God. And the other, the physical thing that he had, though, uh, that we note was his health. He still had his health. 
But as we see in chapter chapter 2, uh, notice, notice as we go on in chapter 2 and uh, look at verse, verses 1 through 8 now. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said to Satan, From where do you come? Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. The Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil? And still he holds fast to his integrity, although you incited me against him to destroy him without cause. So Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin. It's all that a man has he will give for his life. But stretch out your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will surely curse you. To your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, he is in your hand, but spare his life. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and struck Job with painful boils from the sole of his feet, from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. He took for himself a potsherd with which to scrape himself while he sat in the midst of the ashes. You know, just when you think it couldn't get any worse, right? Satan realized that the hedge of physical prosperity, uh, the physical possessions, the hedge of provisions, Job's children was not what Job had placed his trust, his security. So Satan proposes to the Lord God that if he could just take Job's health, that Job would surely, most assuredly, curse God to his face. Surely that's what he'll do, right? So God gives Satan the go-ahead. He says, go ahead. But he gave him a condition. He says, you need to spare. You must spare Job's life. Verse 6 says, So Satan goes forth and strikes Job with painful bulls from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. And Job would take that potsherd, which is a, a broken piece of ceramic, uh, basically a, a fragment of pottery. And he would scrape himself when he sat in the midst of, of the ashes there. Verse 8 notes. Now every time that I read this account, I, I, I think and I have said to others who have experienced, uh, maybe not to the very degree that uh, Job has, but some difficult times uh, in their lives, whether they're talking about physical possessions or their physical health and sometimes a combination of both of those things, that truly the hits just keep on coming. Um, and this is one of those times when you don't dare ask that question, you know, what could possibly happen next? I mean, you know, <laughs> you don't, don't ask that question because now with the hedges of physical uh, prosperity, his possessions, uh, uh, provisions, his children, and now, and now as chapter two notes, his health is gone. What do we say? You know, Job, it's no doubt that he's had a pretty tough time, <laughs> no doubt about that one, right? And boy, I tell you what, maybe we could be thankful for his wife. You know, you know, I mean, he lost his children. At least he has someone there to console him physically uh, while he's dealing with his loss of physical possessions and prosperity and provisions. His children, you know, his health is deteriorated. Uh, you know, it's just good to have a, a good, loving woman there to to console him and to to to. Um, give words of, of comfort and strength. That's not how that story goes, does it? That's not how that account goes because as you go on, oh, I tell you what, this is a, this is a tough lesson, isn't it? When you think about all the troubles that you see with Job in verses in verse 9 and 10, look at it. Oh, then his wife said to him, do you still hold fast to your integrity? Curse God and die. But he said to her, You speak as one of the foolish women speaks. Shall we indeed accept good from God, and shall we not accept adversity? And all this Job did not sin with his lips. What do we say now? <laughs> Can we even find the words in this? Again, this is such a difficult text uh, to for us to to um, imagine, to, to, to think on. 
because what we find is now Job's own wife, who basically she was going to be the hedge of physical strength and support, hedge of comfort physically. And now she just told him to curse God and die. Job, what else do you have? What else is behind that hedge? What else do you have? You see, what we tend to do is the same thing as this progression that we have went through already in Job 1 and Job 2. We try to find something else that we can put our hands on physically, that we can get a grip on, say, well, at least I still have this. At least I, and, and it's, and it's many times, uh, physically, physically thought of, but again, just as you see in Job two verses nine and 10, look what's gone. Look what's gone. But this is how our minds on this earth operates, you know, because as we're going to talk about, you know, we are hedged in. We're hedged in with all the physical comforts, et cetera. But again, when, when you go through all those physical, you know, if you make a list of all the physical provisions, all the physical possessions, uh, the uh, possessions and prosperity that we have, uh, if you were to put a value on them uh, physically and, and also think about your family, your children, your health, all of these things that we can put in your spouse. Think of all of those things that we have, that we are, are truly, I, again, we're blessed beyond measure, certainly. But we're hedged in with a lot of physical comforts. But again, I'm asking in the question of asking myself that when those are all gone, when the hedges come down, what's left? And the question that we're asking again is what's behind your hedge? You see, Job's wife, um, sometimes we make her the, um, the most terrific villain that's ever existed on the face of the earth. You know, how dare Job's wife just act the way that she did and say that to Job. Look at all the things that, that's, that uh, is going on and, 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 and here she is just kicking him while he's down. All right? How can she say such things? But you know, Job's wife also lost the same things. It wasn't just Job that was uh, affected by, by the loss of children. 10 children, to be exact. It wasn't just the loss of the physical prosperity of their land, their possessions. She lost it as well. That's something we see the commonality here with Job. <laughs> I mean, she still had her health, but the fact of the matter is we might be we might have more in common with Job's wife than we may say we know we might automatically say there's no way that I, that I, I I'm anywhere as near like Job's wife because she's she, look at how she reacted to these uh, circumstances she should have been over there you know consoling her husband and the difference between Job and Mrs. Job, if we want to put a name there, Miss Job, is that her trust and security was actually in those hedges, weren't they? And when those hedges came down, you see, Job actually got to see where his wife had actually placed her faith, where her trust was. And I can see Job and Miss Job, I can see them prior to all of of this, her praying with Job, that they worship their Lord God together. 
as they went day to day and basking in their wonderful uh, provisions that they had been blessed with. But that's when things are going okay. That's when things are well. That's the sunshine, right? But what about the storms? What about that? Well, such proves much more difficult for her to praise God in the midst of storms rather than the calm seas. And again, Job's response is, again, another one that just continuously amazes us in verse 10. When he tells his wife, again, you speak as one of the foolish women speaks, shall we indeed accept good from God and shall we not accept adversity? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. You see, God was only good in the eyes of Miss Job when things were good, when the hedges that she had placed her faith and trust in were still there. And as I stated, there's many that would adamantly say, there's no way I'd be like, there's no way I'd be like Job's wife. There's no way. But just think about how you react, how you respond to circumstances of life. When our physical comforts, something bad happens. We may have more in common with Job's wife than we'd like to admit. You know, you take a moment, you think of your hedges today. What, what, what you have that you hold so dear that if they were all of a sudden gone, would you still hold fast to your integrity with God? Would you still hold fast to it? There's a song that I, I, I love to mention, um, one that I think of quite often. Um, remind me, dear Lord. <laughs> we need reminders, don't we? Remind me, dear Lord, it says the things that I love and hold dear to my heart are just borrowed. They're not mine at all. Jesus only lets me use them to brighten my life. So remind me, remind me, dear Lord. When we think of all that we have today, those things that we love and we hold dear to our hearts, it's truly just borrowed. They're, they're borrowed. Even our breath that we have each and every day, that's just borrowed from the one who gave it to us. It's a blessing from the Lord, no doubt, all the things that we have, but it all belongs to Him, the Creator. It's not ours. You know, and I look at Job, who had a very strong... Uh, uh, point that he entered this world naked and he says naked shall I return and and that really what that does is it gives us perspective in life doesn't it it gives us perspective when he says the Lord gives and the Lord takes away blessed be the name of the Lord see Job acknowledged that we won't be taking anything with us <laughs> You know, the Ecclesiastes writer reminds us of that. We brought nothing to this world, and surely we're not carrying nothing out. Um, and that's reiterated throughout the Scriptures. None of the hedges of which we previously noted together, we're not going to take a single thing with us. Nothing. None of this physical provisions. Anything. The only thing that will pre be presented before God is our soul. That's it. Our soul. That we're going to give an account of what we did in this body, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 14. Or 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 10. And what I simply want us to do, uh, and again, this brief lesson that I want us just to get our minds thinking and, and stimulate our, our thinking about where we really place our faith. Where, where do we place our trust? And as I was... You know, thinking about this lesson again, I, I thought about the hedges of my life and I thought about all of my physical provisions, possessions, my family, you know, my health. And I thought if all of a sudden it was gone tomorrow, would I still hold fast my integrity to the Lord? What would I do? What's behind the hedges is the question. Is there really true faith? Is there really true trust in the Lord God? 
And again, it's, it's easy to sing those words of that song that my treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue while I have a death grip on the treasures I have here on earth. <laughs> you see. We know the scriptures that, that teach us about where our hearts are supposed to be. As Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21, Jesus exhorted that we're not to lay up for ourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for your, yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. He goes on in verse 24. About no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. And he goes on, verse 33, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. In a similar way, uh, the Apostle Paul reiterates what Jesus is talking about in Matthew chapter 6 and Colossians chapter 3. In verses 1 and 2, If then you are raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind or affections on things above, not on things on the earth. He's talking in the Christians who came to that watery grave of baptism to rise and walk in of life, as Romans 6, verses 3 and 4 says. He says, Your mind is set on things above, not on things of this earth, because the things of this earth is where moth and rust destroy... Uh, 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 let me go back to that scripture. Moth and rust, moth and rust destroys, and where thieves break in and steal. There in verse nineteen. That's where our minds, if we're not careful, will uh, be looking toward. If we're not focused on Christ, we have to have our minds set. Our treasures laid up in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys where thieves not break in and steal. Now I'm sure Job never would have thought that he would have ever dealt with what he was dealing with at this particular point in his life. <laughs> I don't think he may have thought of it. I, I, again, I don't know of all the specifics there of his mindset prior to this happening. I just know that he was a good man. He was a good man. He had integrity with the Lord. He was a loyal servant. He worshipped his God. He was faithful. And I'm sure that Job never would have thought that his wife would have abandoned God as well as him. But friends, when the tough trials come about... You know, again, he saw exactly what God already knew about her. Her faith was built on the ever-sinking sand. You think about what he said about you speak as one of the foolish women. It reminded me of the foolish builder. The one who built his house upon the sand. There's no foundation there. And because he built his, because the foolish man, the builder, built his house upon the sand, the storms came, the winds blew. And what happened? His house fell, and great was the fall thereof. And when I look at Job's wife, that's exactly how she was building her spiritual house. It was built upon the ever sinking sand and as the winds blew and the pouring rain came, she crumbled and great was the fall. But again, I, I think back to the question, would our response be the same as hers? Is it really any different? And again, it's easy to, to say that, you know, oh, no, 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 you know. I'm not going to let that affect me, my integrity with the Lord. Friends, I can look back over 20 years of preaching. And I have seen people crumble for less than what I saw in this passage of Job's wife crumble. 
because their faith, their trust was not in God. It wasn't built on that. It was placed in the hedges. Again, would our response be any different than Job's wife? Would our faith be refined, or would there ever would there even be faith to be revealed behind the hedges? What's behind the hedge? Friends, we need to be careful not to deceive ourselves, for again, this happens all too often. We have to acknowledge together that we are simply sojourners on this earth, pilgrims. You know, it's another song that I, I find myself humming it from time to time. Here we are, but straying pilgrims. <laughs> it's all we are. And we are only borrows of the things that we love and the things that we enjoy that God gives us here. But the question that we're asking, are those things that which defines who we are? Is it what defines us, even our faith? Friends, there will cert most certainly come a time when we leave all that we have and take with us all that we are. Don't miss that, what I just said. Friends, there's coming a time when we will leave all that we have and take with us all that we are. That brings me to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27. It's one you've heard quoted many times. It's appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment. Friends, even in that moment, will we be found holding fast to our integrity in the Lord? Is He the one who defines us and all that we are in our identity? Or is it the things and passing pleasures of this life? What's behind your hedge? I want you to really take this time, as I have, and I think, and I appreciate the request to hear this sermon and again. I love it when other preachers preach on this very topic as well, because again, I think it's one that has to be reiterated over and over again and get our minds thinking, what have we placed our faith and our trust in? What happens when the hedges are gone? What happens when the hedges come down? And I hope that you find that your faith and your trust is built on the solid rock. Even when all the hedges have been taken away, you have the solid rock that is Christ. For that rock cannot be moved and provides more protection and more security that will last far beyond this mortal life. You go read 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and you're going to see it. And what Paul's talking about. Romans chapter 8. You're going to find so much richness and depth to what God provides as we lean upon Him, not on things of this world. And if you have found yourself this evening that your temporal hedges are all that you have and the temporal things are what defines you and your life, it's my hope and prayer that you'll do as the proverb writer states in Proverbs chapter 3 and verses 5 and 6 that you'll put your trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct your paths. I hope and pray that you will do just as the proverb writer says. Friends, if you need to put on the body of Christ from baptism, repenting of your sins, being baptized, immersed to rise and walk in newness of life as Romans 6 verses 3 and 4 says, I hope that you will do just that. I hope you'll do that. And if you need to study more about that and salvation, I want you to get with me. Please do that. And I'm going to give you my information here as well on the screen. My email address is dj at laportechurchofchrist.com. And I would encourage you to, to go to our website even, laportechurchofchrist.com there. And, and look at the resources that are given. And, and please uh, follow up with me. Uh, ask about uh, any questions that you may have. Uh, I'd love to study with you. It's very, very important thinking about where your faith and your trust is. And again, if it's not in the ark of safety in Christ, then my friends, your faith and your trust is in things 
And again, you'll find yourself having more in common with Job's wife than what you may all, man, you may think. So please think really, really hard on this and, and uh, get with me. And I would love to, love to help you in your journey, your spiritual walk. Even as Christians, Christians, you know, this is, this is a true struggle because, again, we can be just like Job's wife. It's easy to, to come and to worship God and to be able to sing our praises to Him and to, and to, and to thank Him for all the things that He blesses us with. But what happens when the hedges are gone? What do we do then? Do we say with Job, The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Or are we more like Job's wife? Curse God and die. You may not say it out loud, but I will submit to you that actions speak louder than words. We need to be careful. And if you're downtrodden, if you're, you found yourself uh, laying up those treasures on earth rather than in heaven, and your heart's in the wrong place, then get, get with me as well. I would encourage you to... And we, I want to help you as well in your spiritual journey, in your spiritual walk. I want to thank you so much for taking the time to be with me today, uh, to study the Word of God together and appreciate the request in this lesson. It has certainly helped me, again, to study here from Job chapter 1 and chapter 2. And we're going to be looking uh, as well uh, in, in the book of Job uh, next Sunday evening uh, and about what Job did during this time and... and uh, I hope that it will help you in what you're dealing with also in your, your physical life. As we, we look at all around us and thinking about people who's lost their health, who have lost so many things, uh, difficult times that we're living in uh, as well in 2020. But again, that's why it's so important to ask, what's behind your hedge? I would encourage you, if you're in the LaPorte, Texas area, please, please, Come and worship with us on Sunday. Come and be with us Se uh, at uh, 704 South Broadway Street here in LaPorte, Texas. We're having our two modified inside services as well, 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. We're doing that, of course, to follow CDC guidelines. That way we can uh, appropriately socially distance there uh, so we can keep everyone uh, as, as physically safe as possible. All the while, we are spiritually being built up in the faith as we have been commanded from Hebrews chapter 10. And so please come and be with us. If you'd like to do that, please let us know. Uh, we'll make sure that we have a spot reserved for you to come and be with us to worship our great God together. If you're not comfortable coming into the building setting, we have an FM transmitter where we can uh, transmit to the car radio. And that way you can assemble there in the parking lot. We have several that are using this drive-in style. 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. That FM transmitter is available. You pull in the parking lot not in turn your, and tune your station, your FM station at 91.1, FM 91.1. And uh, make sure to uh, give you a self-serve communion cup as well as uh, the bulletin for the, the week. And also uh, the songs that we'll be singing. So please feel free to come and join us in that. If you're not able to, if you're physically not able to get out, we have several as well that are, that are homebound uh, that cannot get out. So uh, they tune in live uh, from uh, their home. 10 a.m. we go live, we live stream our services, our worship services at the 10 a.m. hour. So you can also uh, access that through our YouTube channel or our Facebook page. So so please, please, uh, as the card says there, be our guest. Please be our guest here at LaPorte Church of Christ. We're just uh, so thankful for the opportunities and, and the provisions that we have to be able to preach and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ as he brings salvation to all men. And that's what we're to be doing and living accordingly. Uh, again, be our guest. Uh, at if there's uh, questions, again, if there's anything that's uh, on your mind that you would like to talk about, uh, maybe a certain topic, uh, again, go, go to our website. You can uh, find topics there as well on LaporteChurchChrist.com or anything specific. You can just uh, email me at DJLaporteChurchChrist.com. All right, let me thank you so much for spending this, well, almost 45 minutes of time 
uh, together in this Bible study. I hope that you've been encouraged. I hope you've been edified in the study of Job chapter 1 and chapter 2. And really take stock about what's behind your hedge. Have a great rest of the day and a wonderful week. God bless.